Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Laura Gretchen's workshop. Now that the third floor of the dress shop is at a reasonable state of completion, I'm going to go ahead and start adding accessories to the bathroom. So the men have been working and they've completed their work in moving the furniture from the bedroom up to the sewing room and the bedroom furniture down to what was the sewing room. They've left quite a mess here in the bathroom. Oop! And they left the toilet seat up. I know Aunt Bess is not going to like that. Maybe I'll put it down before she notices. But I definitely need to go ahead and add some accessories to this room. Now, I do need to make some towel racks. I do have a video on how I make towel racks from paper clips and earring backs. I will leave a link in the description for that video. But let's talk about this little cabinet. Now, this is a little random cabinet that I got in so a lot of old furniture that I've had for quite some time. I did do... Uh, crackle medium paint effect on it to make it look old and really vintage and my original idea was to fill it with toiletries and tiles and things for this bathroom but now that I'm looking at everything I have some new ideas now all the fixtures in the bathroom are chrism bond set and I will leave a link in the description of the video of when I put all that together and aged it and for those of you who are new to my channel there is a link in the description of when I made that door as well so let's go ahead and get on to the topic at hand. So I need to do something about this blank wall. It just looks way too plain. It definitely needs some cabinets or something on the wall. Now I originally thought I was going to use this wall to put a little shelf that I got in my estate sale hall, but I'm changing my mind. Now these are those little sconces that I got in a recent unboxing and I'm considering putting them on the wall next to the medicine cabinet. But after I tried it, I didn't know if I liked the way that looked. I don't have the magnets anyway, so I'll have to wait until I get the magnets for that. Now this little shelf is what I wanted on this side, but for some reason it seemed a little bit impractical to the way people normally use their medicine cabinet or where their toiletry items are. So just looking at the setup for the original thought for the bathroom, having the cabinet here and the sink on the other side, I think I want to switch it up. So I'm going to move the sink to this side where the radiator is and mount it on this side and then put the cabinet on the other side. Wow, I wish life-size bathroom remodels were actually that simple. <laughs> Now, dolls, just so you know, none of my fixtures are glued in. They're all secured to the wall with excessive amounts of tacky wax. Now, here I am again piddling around with those sconces. I really can't attach them because, again, I don't glue those either. I use magnets, but I haven't bought the magnets that I use to attach them to, so I'll have to wait for that. So today, dolls, I'm going to allow you to watch me play. Now, this little hammer is actually not a dollhouse miniature. It's actually an accessory from a wrestling rink set that my grandsons had over my house over the Christmas holiday. And they left it on the floor. So, it's grandma's now. So, I painted it silver so that I can put it in the toolbox undetected. <laughs> so, in addition to accessorizing the cabinet, I will be filling this little shelf. Now, this is the shelf that I got from an estate sale find, and I will leave a link in the description for that video. So, I've pulled out all my little accessories that I've set aside specifically for this bathroom. Now, these are some little clay bars of soap. They're actually spares or leftovers from when I accessorized the rooming house bathroom. One of the little round bars I wrapped in tissue to make it look like that special guest room soap that we were never allowed to use at my grandmother's house. Now, some of the items you see in the frame are items that I need to put in the sewing room. So disregard those. They are not associated with this video. Now, many of the lovely toiletries that I'm pulling out actually came from that estate sale find as well. Now, this is a little perfume bottle I made with a couple beads a long time ago. And I wanted it for this project. And here's another one. Now, dolls, if you're new to the channel, I like to add things in layers and really mix them up. So I like mass-produced items, homemade, handmade items. I just like the variations of colors, shapes, sizes, all the things that make an image visually interesting to look at. So right now I'm just playing around with the bottles to see which ones actually fit on the shelf. Since this is not a shelf that I made, I actually have to make my items fit the shelf. In general, when I make my own dollhouse items or dollhouse furniture and shelves, 
I make the shelves to fit the items that I'm going to use it for. But when you buy mass produced things, you kind of have to work around it, which is a key motivation of learning how to make some of your own things. Now, the bottles that actually fit, I'm just making them stay in place with a little tacky wax, either on the bottom or on the side. I know that there are people who glue their things in, but for things like this, I may change my mind or want to use an item in another house. And I just don't want to have to commit to it like that. So yeah, the wax works good for me. I heard um, that there's something called tack it over and over. I definitely need to try that because that may give me another option as well. But for now, I'm working with the tacky wax. It's been tried and true and has worked for me for years. So I trust it to hold my things in place. Now you definitely have to be careful when you're using the tacky wax. I have a tendency to use an excessive amount of the wax, similar to how I used to use the glue. And I'm not trying to get counseling for that. I'm just trying to make sure I camouflage whatever wax I do use but I do use enough that my pieces won't fall off. Now, keep in mind, some of these items that are from the estate sale are actually made of metal. Those bottles are made of some type of metal and they're covered in enamel. So they're heavier than some of the lighter weight, um, more modern miniatures. Now, I actually want to put things in the drawer as well and leave the drawer open. So I'm just playing around with the idea of dolls. I'm not set with anything. I'm just trying to put some things in place to get a feel for how I really want the bathroom to look. I do have quite a few more accessories I need to add. Again, like I said, towels, towel rack, toilet paper roll, all of those things. But I'm really, really excited about what I have so far. This looks really more realistic than what I even imagined. Now, from time to time, you will see me using my tweezers and my locking tweezers to adjust things because that little space is pretty small and sometimes it's hard to get things adjusted or spaced properly without the use of some locking tweezers. So if you can get some dials, definitely consider it. Now, locking tweezers are available a lot of different places, but I will put a link in the description for the ones like the ones I have. So let me bring it up so you can see where it is so far. I really like the combination of the look of the estate sale items alongside of the perfume bottles that I made from beads. Now, one of the key things I think is really important is how you put things in based on height and color. And I want to put things in in a way that they would probably naturally be used, but you don't want it to look too perfect, perfect, and everything on the straight line because, well, in my house, that's not the way I use things. So this is the look of it head on. And let me turn it to the side so you'll see how you'll be able to view it from outside the house. So this is kind of how it would look. And even though I filled it and spaced things out, there's still room for me to put other items. Now that side with the glob of wax, you won't be able to see it. And I'm putting a little wax on the back so it'll stick on the wall. But I generally like to put things where it'll look full and used, but I like to leave space. And in case I buy or make something else, I want there to be room for me to add things. And I don't want to give the impression that the ladies are hoarders. <laughs> Take note of the large amounts of wax on the back. Now, the wax, one thing I must say, it does not damage your items. It just holds them firmly in place so that if you bump your dial house or move it or shift it, your things won't go tumbling across the room. Now, dolls, this is the little Krizenbahn cabinet that's going to be sitting next to the open shelf that I just filled. And it's got a nice little area on top that I think will be perfect for a few items. To me, moments like this really make me realize how important my dolls are for me setting up my scenes. So although this is a dress shop doll house where the ladies are running a business, there are a lot of little personal things two older women would automatically have. Now, these are some accessories that were sent to me by my friend Renee. They are part of a Krizenbahn set but they're all painted and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and add them in as well. A couple of these little resin bottles were a little bit oily at the bottom, I guess from the molds that they came out of. So I had to put the wax on the side of those bottles and connect them to some of the bottles that were already on the shelf. 
I forgot I had two toothpaste. I think I'm going to put one of those in the rooming house. So here's another instance of some items that I made more than I need for my last project. And I'm so glad that I did because it would have been totally annoying to have to stop working on this project just to make three or four rolls of toilet paper. And look, I even made an extra toilet paper holder, which is very convenient. And when I say make extras, I'm not trying to promote any hoarding or just being excessive. I'm just saying that some items are so small and so common and so easy to make. It just makes sense while you're on a roll and have the materials out and available to make a few extra and stash them. Just make sure you remember where you put them. <laughs> Now here's my toilet paper on the roll. I've actually put a little tacky wax on the back so I can adhere to the wall. And I've got a little shell-shaped soap dish as well. So you can kind of see, you can peek inside and see the rolls of toilet paper, hot water bottle. Since there are two toothbrushes laying on the cabinet in the bathroom, I'm going to put this holder in the bathroom of the rooming house. But I will put the mouthwash cup in Aunt Janie and Aunt Bess's bathroom. But let me show you this toothbrush holder mounted to the wall in the rooming house bathroom. Now dolls, I just wanna show you really quick and give you an up close view of some of those sewing room items that are on the table while I was working. And although they are not a part of the bathroom setup, they are accessories for the dress shop. And you will see them in another video all set up in the sewing room. So let's look at the bathroom with everything set up. So dolls, this is just a quick recap or flashback to everything we did in the dress shop bathroom today. I think it looks so realistic and so authentic. It actually reminds me of the bathroom at the house that I grew up in. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today and you want to see more content, content like this, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have so much more to share, so I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.